If you're a sucker for growing plants from suckers, like I am, or pups, stick around. I think you'll enjoy this episode. G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and this is episode four in a five-part seed saving series. If you haven't seen the first three episodes, I encourage you to do so, as all these videos are related. Let's get into it. Number four, tuber, rhizome, runner, bulb, or sucker slash pups. This way of creating new food plants isn't seed, obviously, but it refers to using the growth of the plant from either under the soil or from the plant itself above the soil to harvest and grow new plants. Just a few common examples of tuber, rhizome, runner, bulb or sucker plants are turmeric, ginger, galangal, Jerusalem artichoke, potato, garlic, sweet potato, bananas, pineapples and mint. These would have to be some of the easiest types of food plants to keep growing in the backyard environment. Once established, many of these plants will continue to multiply and grow on by themselves, but it's often better if we step in and manage them when necessary. Tubers, rhizomes and bulbs can be dug up and those not eaten can be stored away in a cool dark place to plant out next season. Indeed, another way to keep them is to leave some in the ground and dig them up to spread around just before the season begins. Although there is a risk to this method, such as extended wet or cold could rot or kill them. Okay, let's get into some practical examples. I'm holding ginger here, and you're, if you've followed me for any length of time, you'd know how many times I spruik about my ton of ginger video. So if you haven't seen that, really, go and see my how to grow a ton of ginger. Our ginger for this season has all died off because we're into winter now. So all the rhizomes are buried underneath the soil. You can see some of them popping up. The asparagus that I showed you earlier in this video, it's over here. And that too is something that I prefer to plant with a crown rather than, like I said before, by seed. And I showed how to plant them in my how to grow a ton of asparagus video not so long ago by using that crown method if you're interested in knowing more about that. But yes, now that the ginger has died off, what I'll typically do is just leave it here and harvest as needed. I might take this piece now that I've dug it up, I'll take this piece up and put it upstairs on the kitchen bench so that we can use it. But otherwise we'll just dig it up as needed. I won't necessarily harvest all this. But when it comes to spring again, and this is gonna start shooting, I'll generally dig it all up, refurbish the bed, and then replant and spread the ginger out. Plant the minimal amount back into the garden and let that remultiply for the next season. Here's two good examples. One's a rhizome. This is turmeric, and you can see it's going yellow and it's starting to die back now that we're in the middle of winter. This will all die back to the ground just like the ginger did. And then on the other side here, we have a tuber, which is potato. These potatoes here actually were store-bought potatoes that had sprouted in the pantry. And instead of chucking them in the compost or throwing them out, what I did was I decided that I'd plant them into the garden. And even though we're in our subtropical winter here and it's quite cool, you can see they're thriving and growing really well. If I'm going to save potato seed, which is really just saving some potato tubers, I tend to harvest them all and then keep them in a cool, dark place, usually our pantry. We'll eat most of the potatoes and perhaps set aside several to replant out after they've started sprouting or chitting. As far as turmeric goes, I treat this the same as ginger by mostly leaving it in ground and harvesting as needed then digging up just prior to the season beginning to refurbish the bed before replanting what we don't use. And in front of the potatoes here, sticking with the store-bought theme, we had some garlic that, well, actually saw it sprouting in the store and they were selling it at a bargain price. So I decided to grab a whole packet and plant it into the garden. This is a bulb, of course. It's not a tuber, it's not a rhizome. So you plant the bulbs in and then once 
you harvest the garlic cloves. Of course, you store them in the pantry or wherever and you use your garlic. And then again, when the new season comes around, usually you see the garlic starting to sprout. Depending on the climate you're in, you might replant it a lot earlier and leave that garlic sprout when it wants to. But in the subtropics, you don't want to risk it rotting in the soil. So I generally wait to the last minute and wait till summer is over and then plant the bulbs out. Speaking of bulbs, remember I talked earlier about this onion bed? Well, in the center is these Egyptian walking onions. And these are really weird. You can grow them from the bulb like an onion in the base of the plant, but it also makes bulbettes at the top of its leaves when it wants to. It hasn't got any at the moment. And those bulbettes then drop, droop over, then it takes root, and that plant starts growing again and it grows a whole new bunch of bulbs. So I thought that was a really interesting difference when you've got seed onions here and a bulb and bulbette onion growing in the middle. And then on the other side here, We've got mint growing. Remember my how to grow a ton of mint? Well, you can see that it's winter now and our mint had died back through summer. Dies back to just dirt practically. And now it's starting to come back again. And it's looking nice and lush and it'll soon take over this whole bed and grow really well into spring. And then when the hot summer hits again, it'll die back. But this then is different again. It's a runner, a runner plant. It, pushes out runners that sometimes are on top of the soil, sometimes underneath. And from those runners that it pushes out rather quickly, it can take over a lot of area and then the foliage starts to grow off those runners. There's some good examples just in this small part. And in the foreground, just in front of you there, is sweet potato. Very similar to, I suppose, a tube of potato. But again, it's almost like a cross, isn't it, between a mint and a tuber potato because it has a root like a potato or a tuber, which we eat, and it can grow off a slip or like a runner that you can plant. And that's what I've done here along this whole bed. I planted or underplanted some runners or some slips or some pieces of vine, whatever you want to call it. And then that has grown into obviously tubers underneath because the more vigorous this plant becomes obviously the larger the tubers grow in the bed and it just multiplies. Remember how I talked about the chia? Well in the middle of this chia, before this chia grew, we grew some Jerusalem artichoke which is a good example of a tuber that you can grow again and again and just keeps coming up by itself. If I dig in here to the center I might be able to find some for you. There's a good nugget. Just dug up then. And that plant had died back, oh, probably six weeks ago at least. And these tubers will just stay in the soil nice and whole and crispy until you want to cook them up and eat them. And then they will just regrow if you just left them in the garden bed. The chia will die off as summer hits and the Jerusalem artichoke will come back and take over and look fantastic in the garden. I'll take you just across here and show you something that grows similar that I hadn't grown before, but I'm gonna keep growing. And that's this yacon or Peruvian ground apple. It has tubers that are actually quite sweet. They're a bit like a potato, but they're sort of crunchy and sweet like a pear flesh. And this is very similar to the Jerusalem artichoke that I just showed you, except a lot bigger. And uh, I'm going to harvest that plant now that it's died back into winter. And before spring hits, I'm going to dig up all those tubers and plant them into a bed of their own so I can grow a whole ton of yacon. I think that'll be fantastic. I really love the taste of this. I haven't cooked it up yet, We've eaten it raw, lovely and raw in salads, but just so easy to grow, very hardy, and it looks nice in the garden too, flowers beautifully. You can store this then inside if you wanted to, uh, maybe even in the crisper, uh, and then, but I would personally just store it in the ground and harvest as needed 
and then before spring hits or your warmer season hits then start digging it up and spreading it out the final examples i want to show you are growth from suckers or pups to make new plants and i have three fairly interesting examples that i'll go over pretty quickly first of all obviously pineapples this one here we harvested a few days ago and it's looking magnificent can't wait to tuck in the way we regrow pineapples is really easy we just cut the top off about an inch or so from below the head of it and then just replant that back out into the garden and we do that at any time of year but if you wanted to save the top say you were harvesting the top from a store-bought pineapple and you wanted to save it for any length of time or make sure that it got a good root structure before you planted it out and you were maybe had the top in winter and you wanted to wait till spring to give it a good chance in whatever climate you're in well then what you could do instead of planting it directly back out like we mostly do you could put this in a little pan of water or a pot and nurture it and let it grow on before you plant it out and keep it inside that's one way of storing obviously it's not seed but storing a plant and growing it slowly keeping it alive until you want to plant it out the next sucker example is bananas of course and you would have seen my how to grow a ton of banana videos if you haven't check it out but here's a good example right here of a sucker coming up underneath this even small banana plant obviously you're not going to be able to really store this too much but you could remove it and that's how you make new banana plants you just remove these suckers and then replant them on somewhere else or in a pot and move them to wherever you want but as far as keeping them for any length of time say for some reason it wasn't the right time to plant it out well i suppose you could remove it put it into a small pot and then keep it growing on in a sheltered position nurture it until you want to plant it out i guess it's sort of some type of seed saving in a way and the final practical example is this brew kale here this is a cross between a brussels sprout and a kale what happened was last season because it takes a long time to grow the plant hit our summer and basically it wouldn't produce because it got too hot the season wasn't long enough is what i'm trying to say however i did leave the plant grow through summer which it survived and then on the plant it grew several suckers that just came up and you will see this in some brassicas and even other standard plants that you would grow normally from seed you will see sometimes if you grow over season or even during the same season you might see little pups form on the stems then those little pups or sucker growth can be removed and potted up or planted straight back or laid into the garden like i've done for this new season well i hope you enjoyed this fourth episode tuber runner rhizome bulb or sucker in our seed savings tips series keep an eye out for episode five cuttings and grafting where i'll explain creating new food plants and fruit trees from pruning and i'll also wrap up the series with several bonus tips don't forget to give the video a big thumbs up and if you've got any questions on this episode whack them down below also if you've got some tips and some experience you can share whack it down below so we can all learn from it thanks a lot for watching bye for now